You don't need a luxury kitchen to prepare gourmet meals. I wanted a little on the sticky side. With a modest kitchen and some standard equipment, you can cook food that you would be proud to serve. There is my shrimp. All you need is a few helpful kitchen techniques, the ability to follow a recipe, a passion for food, and a fascination with cooking. Just follow along the rib cage. That is so good. My name is Dennis. I really do live in a mobile home, in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. Just recently, someone gave me a little bag, a one pound bag of petite Patagonian scallops. And looking through the little window there, they are petite. They're smaller than base scallops. So I thought, well, they're too small to sear to make, for example, a lunch or a dinner of seared scallops. And I wondered, what could I use those for? And the idea came to mind, what about chowder? I have on my website and on YouTube a recipe and a video for clam chowder. So I'm going to use that as a starting point, but I want to make it different. I don't want to use clam broth in the soup, clam broth alone, because it'll taste like clam chowder. So I thought, how can I modify the flavor? So along with some clam broth, I'm going to use some vegetable stock. That'll give me more depth to the flavor. I have in the freezer some shrimp shells from shelling shrimp. I thought I would cook that for a little bit in the stock to add more flavor to the stock. And that'll give me not really a fish stock, but it'll give me a little bit more of a flavorful stock to use in my chowder. And then of course, potatoes and a little secret that I like to add to my chowder. I'll talk about that when I get there. So let's make scallop chowder. So here is my one cup that's 237 milliliters of vegetable stock. And I have here a bottle of clam juice, eight ounces, fluid ounces. Again, one cup, 237 milliliters. And then these are my shrimp shells. And I weighed those and they came to four and a half ounces, which is about 128 grams. So these shells now just coming up to the boil. So I'm going to turn my heat down to low, put a lid on that, and then I'm going to put this on a rear simmer burner on my stove while I next prepare my onions. I'm going to let this go for maybe 20 minutes to half an hour, and then I'll strain that for the stock. I have an enameled cast iron Dutch oven here on the stove warming up. Into which I'm putting a couple tablespoons of butter. Normally when I saute, I would use clarified butter, but I'm using whole butter because I'm not going to get this very hot. So I don't need to worry about the smoke point. If you wanted to, you could use oil. You could use olive oil for this. I wouldn't use extra virgin olive oil. I always save that for flavoring, but again, it's a low smoke point, low temperature. So if you wanted to use extra virgin olive oil, you could. And this is one half of a medium onion which is about four, four to five ounces. No, more like five to six ounces, I would say. 140 to 170 grams. And over medium heat, I'm just gonna saute those for maybe five or six minutes until they're tender and translucent. I mentioned earlier a secret ingredient that I like to use in my chowder. This is something I learned from Clarissa Dixon Wright, who passed away several months ago. She was one of the two stars of the BBC cooking series, Two Fat Ladies, and she made clam chowder in one of her shows, one of their shows, and she used this. She used prosciutto. And what I have here is about four to five ounces, which is 110 to 140 grams. When I buy this, I buy it at the deli counter, because if you buy it in the package, it's sliced paper thin. But if I buy it at the deli counter at the store, I can tell the clerk behind the counter to slice it thickly. And this way I can cube it up to go into my soup. So that's what I'm going to be adding to my chowder today, prosciutto. As I said, I wanted to dice my prosciutto up. So I'm going to cut these into long matchsticks like julienne.
and then cutting across. I'll have little chunks of prosciutto. And what this does, it does a couple of things. First of all, it's an interesting meat to have inside of the chowder. But it'll also give off flavor to the soup. And I like that flavor. You can, if you want, you can cut some of this fat out. I don't always get this fussy, but just to show that it can be done. I'm going to work with smaller pieces here. Same thing, cut these into long matchsticks and then dice it up. So you get the idea here of what I'm doing. So there are my onions. Those have actually had time to cool down a little bit. That is the stock that I strained. I also put into that cup the liquid that was in the package for the of the scallops rather and then this is about one pound 454 grams of diced russet potatoes I found a large potato that weighed about a pound I'm gonna bring this up to a boil and I'm gonna cook this for maybe five minutes to start the potatoes cooking they don't have to be cooked all the way now because they're gonna be cooked more when I add the scallops and the prosciutto and the milk that's going to go in this. My potatoes now have been cooking here for about five minutes. Those aren't tender yet but they'll get tender by the time I get through cooking everything. These are my scallops. This is one pound or 454 grams. You can see how small those are. I mean, can you imagine trying to sear those small scallops? I think they're excellent in a soup. So that's a pound of scallops. This is the prosciutto that I diced earlier. I turned my heat up to bring this back up to a boil. And then this is two cups or 473 milliliters. You can use whole milk. I'm using half and half because that's what I've got. I never buy milk because I don't drink it, but I use half and half in my coffee. I don't buy milk because I'll drink the entire half gallon in a day. I love milk, but I don't want all that milk. And then finally, because I think it is perfect in chowder, some freshly ground black pepper and as you can see I've been generous with the black pepper because I think I think the flavor is good in there I'm not going to add any salt yet because that prosciutto will yield some salt and I don't cook with a lot of salt anyways I'll wait until this cooks a little bit longer I'll check it after three or four minutes I want to see that the potatoes are cooked all the way through the scallops will cook pretty quickly when this comes up to a boil okay I'm turning the heat off under my chowder I'm going to put a lid on that and I'm going to let that sit for at least an hour to let all the flavors meld together. And I do got to tell you, I tasted that broth and it is, oh my goodness, so delicious. My chowder now here is ready to taste. I did put this on the heat a little bit. It sat for an hour, but it needed to be warmed up a little bit. Oh. I'm picking up the aroma of that. And that is such a nice aroma for this chowder. Or as they would say in New England, chowder. And there it is, a beautiful bowl of scallop chowder. Okay, I'm so looking forward to this. I'll tell you, waiting that hour plus for these flavors to meld, very difficult because I can anticipate how good this is going to taste. I want to taste my broth first. Yeah, see, it doesn't taste like clam chowder. There's so many flavors in there, but from the, the clam broth 
the shrimp, the vegetable stock. It just has a lot of nice flavor to it. I want to get one of my little bits of scallop here. Mmm. -hmm. Oh. That's too good. That's too good. Ooh. That is so good. It caught me by surprise. So, excuse me. I'm going to go enjoy my scallop chowder. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.